we have all of our photos selected or culled through, we're going to go ahead and filter them to just the photos that we picked. In the top right here, you'll see that we have 237 photos overall. And if I click on the heart down here at the bottom, it's going to filter and give us 70 photos overall. So if I go ahead and jump into the edit module so we can start making our edits, we're going to start with the first photo. You could start wherever you'd like. I personally just like to start from the top and work my way to the bottom. So very first photo to the last one. And when I open a photo, when I know that I'm doing batch editing, what I like to do is actually look at the film strip view to see how many photos are similar to the one that I'm editing. And when I say similar, I really just mean like the location. So this photo and this photo like these four are pretty similar so that's going to give me the ability to synchronize edits and that's what I think about when I start editing through an image uh, in a very simple way here we are in the edit module and the very first thing that I like to do is the color correction and that's just coming down here taking the picker tool and finding an area that should have been neutral gray clicking on it seeing what happens in this particular instance I don't like the way that it worked so I'm going to stick with as shot the next thing that I do is noise reduction I look up here and I shot this at a thousand ISO if I look in the shadowed areas I don't see that much noise going on in the image so I'm not gonna worry about that however if you need it to reduce noise because your photo was just extremely noisy you can just come down here click on noise and sharpening select no noise AI and you would be good to go but I'm not gonna worry about that for this particular image because I don't think it needs it in the workflow and I don't like adding stuff that I don't need if I absolutely don't need it. Then I head back to tone and color and I look at the camera profiles after I have my color corrected and I have my noise reduced. Now for this particular image, I know that camera portrait works the best for the style that I like. Uh, however, if you want it to go with any other camera profile, whatever fits the style of your event or the style of your photo editing, then that's what you should go with. But I'm gonna go with camera portrait. The next thing that I like to do is check my exposure. Now, one way to do that is clicking on levels and then clicking these little triangles up here in the upper right and left of your histogram. You get these indicators on your image that tell you, hey, you got some information that's being blown out. Now, what you can see in this particular image is the sky is blown out. It is just destroyed. I didn't expose for the sky. I was exposing for the rider, which was underexposed overall, which caused the sky to get blown out. So what do you do to fix something like that? The fastest and easiest way to fix that problem is to click on effects and add a curves filter. And I'm going to hold down the J key. That's going to give me an indicator to see what is being blown out. And I'm just going to pull down on this upper right uh, node. And as you can see, I bring that down to 249 and my clipping indications go away. Now, if I had information that was being clipped in the darkest parts of the image, I'm going to hold down J and just pull down on the exposure, which that's not going to get us anywhere. So we'll pull down on the blacks. The blue indicator shows where you may have some underexposed areas. So, you know, pay attention to what your indicators are telling you. When it comes to batch processing, I think that that's extremely important. Now, the next thing that I like to do is just get a overall exposure vibe. So what I like to do is build in some contrast. On a raw photo, I like to move my black point until I get those indicators. So I'll pull this all the way over and I'm starting to get some pure black just about there. And then on the whites, what I like to do is pull those to the right until I start to get those indicators or the photo starts to look good, uh, which I think to about there is good. Now, this is a stylist approach when you get hired for these events make sure that you talk to the coordinator to figure out if your editing style is going to be the thing that they want now if they don't care then go for it but just make sure that you're delivering uh, quality imagery to your clients so that way you continue getting uh, paid and pulled back for more now the next thing that I like to do is color enhancement and I could do that either globally by pulling up on saturation it really does does depend on the photo that I'm editing or I could do that with the global vibrance as well uh, what I'm gonna do is pull up on the vibrance here and
And I think even opening some of the shadows will help, which means I probably need to pull down on my blacks just a little bit more. I'm not worried about the indicators so much there. If I hold down the J key, you can see it's still in about the same places. 100% okay for me to blow out the blacks because black ink is a thing. If they decide to print this, it's just going to put more black ink in that area and that'll be that. And it'll be all right. The other way that I like to modify color is in the effects module and then adding in a color enhancer. And this just allows me to really fine tune by channel where I want those colors to be impacted. So if I click over here on this green channel, I can pull up on the greens and saturate those a little bit more uh, and maybe even push those out of the green hue, so to speak, and then move the yellows more into the green hue. So now I'm getting uh, more greens in my overall image, maybe saturate those, make them a little bit darker so I get that contrasty look. And if I turn this off and on, it's a very subtle adjustment, which again, make sure that whatever adjustments you make in your photos will be good with your client because you never want to make an adjustment that your client thinks is not in the best interest of what they hired you for. The last thing that I like to do is look at cropping the photo. In this particular image, I don't really care for these lines, which are just indicators that there's a hazard on the road. It's a part of the event. I couldn't leave it in there. It makes sense the event coordinator or the client understands that. However, I personally don't like them. I think it's distracting and I want the attention on the writer. So I'm going to hit the letter C on the keyboard and I'm going to use one of my cropping techniques with the diagonal triangles. I have this set to a five by seven. If you know that your client is posting to Instagram or wherever else, you may want to put it into a four by five ratio, whatever you think makes sense. Uh, so I'll go with a four by five ratio because I know that they would post these to Instagram. I'm going to go ahead and pull up just until I get rid of that particular line. Now, what I like to do in my action shots is put all of the action to one side of an image when I crop. So what I'm going to do is move the riders, all three of them, over to the left hand side of the image. Now, I think this is too much give for this rider, even though there's a leading line brings you to that rider and then you can catch this rider, get to that rider. Then you go back down and you know, all of the actions happening there. And then you can kind of look around at the negative space or what I would consider to be negative space because it's not very interesting. However, I think there's just too much. So I'm going to pull in on the left hand side there. And now I'm extremely cropping this photo, but I think that it fits for the overall genre of what they would be doing with these images uh, because I talked to the client and I know what they're going to do with these photos. Now I'm going to hit apply. And this is a much more interesting photo. Got rid of a lot of the distractions. It's been corrected. If I hit Hit the backslash key to show you the preview. This is what we started with and this is where we ended up. I know that the client's going to be happy with this particular photo. Now, the last thing that I'll do just to give this a little bit more dynamic is hit the vignette tool, click on big softy and make the vignette just a little bit larger. This darkens those corners and really just pulls you into the overall photo. This will look good on social media and if they want to push this a little bit further than they can. Now, the last thing that I like to do with my photos is synchronize them over images that are like items. So I'm going to click on this photo here, which is the one that I'm editing. It has the big blue outline, and then I am going to hold the shift key and click on the last photo. So let me just uh, unselect these just so you can see that. So I'm, I have the main photo selected here, and then I'm going to hold down on the shift key on the keyboard and then click the last photo in the series that I think a similar edit would be value added. I'm going to come over here to the right. I'm going to click on sync. I'm not going to go into extreme detail. This is something that I'll talk about in other videos about how you can uh, synchronize your photos. But the develop module has a few subcategories when you hit this little drop down arrow. 
We did make a change to our color and tone because we changed the exposure. If you leave all of these checked, it's just going to synchronize whatever was selected on this photo and put it over all these. So if you didn't make a change like to the midtones, then it's not going to actually edit the midtones on those photos. So you're better just leaving all of that checked if you're not familiar with using this, but leave a comment down below if you got questions about the synchronize options. And then the next thing is effects. The only drop down or extra feature that you get with effects is the apply mask. If I were to mask any of my effects, which I didn't, then if I want that mask to follow, then this is what I want checked. Now, what I will make note about the apply mask feature here is if you're using any of the AI selection features in on one, then it will choose those things in subsequent photos. So if I were to select the person here and make any adjustments to the writer and I use the people task or the people AI select, then it'll find the person in the other photos and apply the adjustments to those individuals as well. But since I didn't do that in this photo, I don't need to check that box. And then I'm just going to hit apply. We'll let on one think for a little bit and you can see down here that it updates the thumbnails. So now when I click on this, I have a big softy color enhancer and a curve module or a curve filter added to this photo. What I didn't synchronize and I didn't call out was the crop and I'm okay with that. But if I wanted to, I can just come back over here. I can hit sync and then I can uncheck the develop and the effects and then I can select crop and level hit apply. And what it's going to do is crop all of those images for me. So now I have all of my images to that four by five ratio and and I think that that works for this particular file as well. And I can just come in here like on this particular image. I don't really care for those lines down at the bottom. I'll hit the letter C. So what it's going to let me do is come in here and recrop this file. So that way I can get rid of that line, which is just that simple. I could also use the perfect eraser, but for simplistic editing, I think that cropping just makes the most sense. And then the next file over, I can do the exact same thing hit the letter C, crop this in, and maybe even just a little bit of a tighter crop, pull it down. And now I have my action on the left side like I like for my particular photos and my edits. So now whenever I deliver these, they're going to have a consistent look to them. What I would do is I'll click done here. It's going to take me back to the library. I would do that for all 70 of the photos, and then I would deliver them.